I came across the Church of Glad Tidings when a challenging circumstance arose in my life. My partner at the time claimed to be hearing the voice of God and that God had told him to end our relationship. And I was also hearing the voice of God, but I was hearing something different. God was telling me to love my partner, Gabriel, and stand beside him no matter what happened. And so that confusion about his source for divine guidance and my source of divine guidance led me to ask perhaps the most important question of my life. Who is God? Did Gabriel and I have different gods? Were there different gods? And when he left that day, I noticed something in the spirit on the left side of his head. It was like a shadow. And I suspected that there was a malevolent spirit pretending to be the voice of God and leading him astray. And my friend Kathy told me about Church of Glad Tidings, and she mentioned that at Church of Glad Tidings, Pastor Dave Byan and his wife had a head-to-head -head battle with Anton LaVey, who was an infamous uh, founder of the Church of Satan. And so when she told me that, I thought, if there's anywhere in the world that can help me, this church definitely fits the bill. On my first visit to Church of Glad Tidings, I happened to hear a sermon by Jess Parker, the head of the deliverance team. And that day he was speaking on receiving your prayer language. And at the end of his sermon, he called anybody to the front who had never received their prayer language. And curious as I was and having asked the question, who is God, I was open to exploring. So I went up on stage or to the front of the room. And when he touched me, I was shocked. I began to speak in tongues for the very first time. And just a week later, I asked someone else in the church for support, Lee Baker. And I told him about my situation with my estranged partner and how I suspected that there might be some sort of demonic or malevolent spirit influence. And he suggested that I pray in tongues for three hours. And being desperate and really wanting to help him, I went ahead and I took his advice. And the next day, I sat down to do this intended three-hour prayer session in my prayer language. And the first 20 minutes, I just struggled. It was awkward. I was speaking this weird language and I wasn't really sure. And I was very new to all of that. But something extraordinary happened after about 20 minutes. The presence of God entered the room and came down from above as a translucent white dove. And when the Spirit of God touched me, my body started shaking and I was encountered by the Spirit of God. And this Holy Presence knew me. It knew me so intimately. Its presence and awareness penetrated to the deepest parts of me. And that day, the Spirit of God began to teach me about the kingdom of God and the divine laws and principles that govern our world. And in that encounter, when the light and the power and the presence of God was in the room, I began to notice that there were things or shadows that were being stirred in and around me that were not of God. On my second visit to Church of Glad Tidings, I was getting ready to leave my house and I reached in the back of my closet and found a bag. And when I picked up the bag, I remembered that I had been using it for a class that I attended with my estranged partner, where we used to listen to this spiritual teacher. We ended up leaving it because it was rather cult-like and there was just a off energy about the place. 
Anyways, I threw this bag on my shoulder and headed out to Church of Glad Tidings. And when I walked in the front doors and I, I put my first foot through the threshold into the sanctuary, one of those handles of the rope bag split in two. And I looked at it and I thought, hmm, that's strange. And then I took my left foot forward and the second rope handle on the bag split and sent the bag falling on the floor. And I was shocked. I was like, wow. And then I thought about where that bag had been used and the environment it had been. And I thought, wow, if the presence of God in this place, Church of Glad Tidings, is so strong that it can literally split this bag and make whatever was on it leave, that I'm definitely in the right place. And so I went and sat down and listened and something I noticed right away because I'm sensitive in the spirit is that the spirit of God was dwelling in the Church of Glad Tidings. And I felt and I saw the Spirit of God moving in this place like I'd never felt in any church before. And at the end of the service that day, they did an altar call. And as I was sitting there wondering what I should do, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me to have the woman with red hair pray for me. And I didn't know who it was at the time. I actually thought it was a guest speaker, but later I found out it was actually the pastor's wife, Cheryl Bryan, and she was the granddaughter of A.A. A. Allen, a famous evangelist that led a healing revival. And when I walked up to her and she placed her hands on my body, my body instantly collapsed and hit the ground. And when my body hit the ground, my spirit flung out and was transported to an entirely different dimension. And it was a dimension of piercing white light that seemed to penetrate through every part of me. Like nothing was unseen. And through the piercing white light came an outstretched hand and it was so bright and I was trying to see where the hand was coming from. And as I focused my intention on, on and towards the face, I realized then it was Jesus. And I thought, well, of course that's you. And so I took Jesus's hand and he led me further into this indescribable light. And it was so bright and blinding that I couldn't really discern what was going on. But I know that we walked up to an altar where I dropped my knee. And when I did, I became aware of these angels that came up on both sides of me and began to anoint me with oil. And all of a sudden, I was back in the church in my body, wondering what happened. On my third visit to Church of Glad Tidings, they led everyone in a deliverance prayer. And I didn't really know much about deliverance then. I just had this faint idea that it had something to do with how Jesus used to cast out demons. And that first day when I was first encountered by the Spirit of God, I noticed that there were things that were not of God being influenced and moving against the power of God that touched me that day. So I knew I needed to go up. I didn't know what was ahead, but I just knew I needed to do it. And so I made a beeline for the front. And when my knee hit the altar in the front, of Church of Glad Tidings after speaking that deliverance prayer. It was like the light of Christ and the darkness of the deception of the New Age and occult came colliding together and my body was thrown backwards by unseen forces. And I began a six-month battle that 
I had between these different dark presences and demonic entities that had come in unknowing to me through my practices in the New Age and occult and the battle between the light of the Holy Spirit, the light of Christ, the light of God Almighty that was coming in to cleanse and free me from the bondage that I had unknowingly became entangled with within the matrix of lies in the New Age and the occult. And after that, I became really serious about my pursuit of God because it was shocking to me being someone who was a very, considered myself to be a very spiritual person. I had spent my much of my life in pursuit of the divine and God, and I was just really confused about God's true identity. Although I heard the voice of God most of my life, I wasn't sure about God's identity and I had a lot of confusion. And so in that journey, I began to study deliverance and tapped into the wealth of knowledge and experience that the Church of Glad Tidings had, having had a head-to-head -head throwdown with Anton LaVey and everything they did to help Deborah Joy with her freedom from bondage, from satanic ritual abuse. And I just felt so held and, and supported. And within six months, I was able to break free from intense bondage. In the midst of my battle for freedom, I continued to have encounters with the Lord. And God told me, that he wanted me to write a book about my experience and everything that was being revealed to me through my encounters. And I wanted to be sure it was God that was asking me that because at that point I had a lot of confusion about who was God and what I had been hearing that wasn't God and I was still sorting through all that. So I said, God, if it's you and you really want me to write this book, I'm going to need an undeniable sign. And as soon as those words left my lips, an earthquake started happening. And so I started running out of my house into the street to take cover. And after a moment, I just paused and go and thought, well, was that my sign? And so I run in the house and I go to my computer and I start Googling God and earthquakes. And I start bringing up these biblical verses that say, thou shalt be visited by the Lord of hosts in thunder and earthquake and great noise. And I knew then that it was the God of the Bible that had been speaking to me. But still, even then I harbored a little bit of doubt. So that night when I went to bed, I woke up at 3 a.m in the stillness of the night, and I heard God's voice thunder in my mind and say, Behold, child, you don't understand what's coming. You must write that book. And then there was another earthquake. This time, I didn't run out of my house. I just sat there. And once my house stopped trembling, I said, OK, God, I'll do it. And my encounters continued. And in those encounters, I was miraculously healed of chronic health conditions. I had neurological Lyme disease that had really damaged my body and my joints, my digestive system, and my neurological system. And in that time of really drawing close and surrendering my heart and my spirit over to God, I was all the symptoms I was experiencing vanished and I was totally healed from a lifetime of struggles with my health. So I continued to pray for my estranged partner, Gabriel, that he too would be encountered by the Lord. I prayed day and night. I probably spent over 50 hours praying for him and visiting the courts of heaven, pleading on his behalf. And one day, he agreed to come down to Church of Glad Tidings with me. And that night, we attended Freedom Night. And at the end of the service, the worship leader's wife prayed over Gabriel. 
And even though I was expecting an instant miracle, it didn't happen then. But that night when we drove home, right before Gabriel was gonna head home, I saw a light come and touch him. And I started praying. And when I started praying, those malevolent forces, those dark presences that had been pretending to be the voice of the God were revealed and the glory of the Lord also encountered great Gabriel that same night. And the next day when he came back and we prayed again, an angel of the Lord came and touched Gabriel and gave him the gift of speaking in tongues. And when he began to speak in tongues that day, a great magnificent glory filled our room and for three hours we were overcome with the glory and the presence of the Lord and these demonic influences that were oppressing Gabriel began to be pushed out of his body manifesting in different forms as God and the Holy Spirit came to take Gabriel also into the kingdom of God. And towards the end of the night, Jesus himself came and touched Gabriel. And after the Lord left, we were sitting there in awe, struck by the magnificence and brilliance and wonderfulness of such a beautiful encounter with the Lord. And Gabriel even got down on his knee and proposed to me. And that night, we gave ourselves to Christ as husband and wife. The Church of Glad Tidings has been an incredible resource for my husband and I in our journey towards God. In a matter of six months of coming here, I was encountered I was delivered. My partner was set free. And in the end, there was a happy ending where Pastor Dave and his wife, Cheryl, even married us. I feel so humbled, so reverent, and so grateful to be a part of what God is up to in this place. And if you're hungry, if you're hurting, if you're searching for freedom, you can find it here at Church of Glad Tidings. And I encourage you to read the book that God asked me to write that is an incredible story of the life and the culture here at Church of Glad Tidings. Just how amazing the Holy Spirit and Jesus is. It's called God Without Limits, Escape from the Matrix of Lies. And you can purchase it on Amazon.